Welcome back, everybody. I have Carl with Top Notch Home Inspections. He is a Hawaiian home inspector, which is I always thought was pretty cool and jealous. I mean, you probably get like amazing views all the time. Like, yeah, I just took a run down by the, the beach, jumped in the ocean. You know, forty-five minute deal back home, sitting on the podcast with you. Wait a minute. So you jump in the ocean and then you run back? No, no, no. I took a run, then jump in the ocean to cool off because it's hot. You know, yeah. even in October, which is nice. <laughs> it's like ninety degrees. So. And then you run back, um, but wet. Uh, no, I just jump in the car and then drive back home. It's about a fifteen-minute drive home. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're not like running from your house down no. the ocean and then back. No. I was like, geez, man, not there that's... yet. That's... Maybe a few more home inspections. I'll move a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so I'm changing up the podcast a little bit, and I'm just doing like a little casual talk at the beginning. And um, one of the first things is, is I always like ask a question and I was wondering like, what's the craziest thing you've seen lately, you think? Lately? Um, so I was on a home inspection. We're doing this huge property. It was uh, actually kind of like a horse compound, uh, about 5,000 feet from sea level and massive log cabin. This log cabin got put together in Canada shipped here and then assembled. I heard the lady spent $33 million to build this place. Gorgeous place. So we're in the kitchen just kind of, you know, doing our thing. And I look over and I'm like, what is that? And I see a kind of like a pool. It kind of looked like water. And uh, I went over and I was like, huh, is that water? It looks thick, kind of gooey. And so I stuck my finger in it and I'm like, I looked up and it was dripping from the ceiling. And I was like, this looks like, like a sap kind of. I was like, must be sap dripping out of the logs, it's, but super bizarre. There's a big puddle and this house is kind of older. And then uh, kind of felt around, smelled it. I'm like, wait a minute, tasted it. It's like, that's honey. It's oh, honey. <laughs> so come to find out, you know, we, we kind of, we, we figured there's probably a massive beehive in this yeah. ceiling. And um, they did further investigation and found out, yeah, the, the entire Dining room ceiling was a massive beehive. Did you see any bees like flying around? No bees flying around. Didn't even see them outside, which was super bizarre. But is it cold? Um, evidently, they were all up there. And the funniest part about it is, is that the caretaker was there, and they had just cleaned the house yesterday. Never had seen any honey dripping from the ceilings at all, and they had been caring for it for years. So on the day of the home inspection, the honey started dripping. Oh man! We were able to find it, but we wouldn't have found it otherwise. Totally yeah, bizarre. I, I wonder if your infrared would have picked up anything. Did you look at it through the IR camera? Yeah, we we tried that, but I guess the the, the bee expert actually came the next day. It was a two day job for me and my guy, and uh, he said that she said that the beehives kind of stay around like ninety four degrees, so it wasn't it wasn't going to show anything yeah, that, with, the, with the thermal imaging. That makes sense. Like yeah, so you wouldn't even see like. A hot spot that would make you look further into it or anything mm -hmm. that's it was it wasn't an attic it was a uh, you know kind of like vaulted ceilings did they say how much it was caught did it cost to remove oh i don't even I, I don't think they have removed it yet but i would get if i had to guess it's probably going to be like 10 20 grand yeah because the they can't kill them anywhere these it's days. just a custom built house and they're going to have to remove the entire ceiling get it out there was no access to that area you know so, That's crazy. Yeah. And actually, one of the craziest things that I saw was today, I just posted a video on Facebook with it, but it was, I was doing the stucco inspection, intrusive stucco inspection, and the homeowners there, and they already redid the back of the property. So mainly, I'm just inspecting the front of the property. And the guy's like, he's like, can you tell me anything wrong? And I was like, no, sorry, I work for the, the buyers. And he was a little frustrated with that. But he went inside, which I'm glad he did. And eventually I started drilling into the stucco on the front and man, right underneath this lamp, I started drilling and water just started pouring out of the wall. <laughs> there was no ground clearance for the stucco. So it was stuck with a ground, right? So it was sealed up tight and it was getting in and around the light fixture and there was no kick out flashing above. So I'm just sure, sure the wall was just Filling up with water. Filling with water. Wow. Top to bottom. And I drilled in it and it was just like a trickle effect of water just coming out. And I was like, oh man. I was like, 
And the guy at the end, he's like, hey, did you find anything? And I was like, I can't talk about it. <laughs> he was standing, literally, when he asked me the question I thought was really funny, he was standing next to the stream of water, pouring it in his bowl. <laughs> and he didn't see it, obviously, because I know what to look for. And he's he's probably doesn't do anything with homes. And I'm just like, uh, I can't talk about it. I just... <laughs> Oh, it would have been a really good skit, though. I think it would have been a good skit if someone actually set that up. I felt like I was in some sort of comedy because <laughs> I'm like looking at this water pouring out of the wall and I'm telling this guy I can't talk about it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so getting into it a little bit, one of the number one questions I always see, I mean, like literally all the time, I see this on Facebook at least once or twice a month. All these new guys, they always ask about Home Advisor. Oh, man. So I, I haven't talked about it too much on my, my podcast. I hope they don't come after me for it, but I don't, probably not. I'm hey, too we're low. just telling truth here, you know? I'm too, I'm too low on the photo phone. Yeah. <laughs> so what is your experience with Home Advisor? Uh, they hit me up in the beginning. You know, you're trying to market your business as best you can. You're trying to get the word out there. So they had a pretty good spiel. Like, you know, get on our website. We'll give you leads. People are always looking for home improvement professionals on our website. And then we'll send them your information. But what we found is after going through just, it seemed like hours of setting up all of this profile and doing all this, all this stuff to get on with them, it's just, um, it was completely worthless. Um, we, we were getting, we were getting, uh, leads for, you know, we call the people up and be like, yeah, you, you, you coming over to fix my roof. I'm like, no, we're a home inspection company. Oh, I need someone to fix my roof. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can't help you. And it was just tons of leads like that, where you're spending your time calling these people, emailing them back. And it was just for jobs that had nothing to do with with home inspections. So you actually even signed up with them in the past. Yeah, I, oh, I went through the whole them. gamut. And then, and then I had to bail with them and they were not happy about that and just kept bugging me about it and had to get super stern with them. Like, hey, you're, everything that you're doing right now is wasting my time even more than you already have. And there is no value to be had here. And I'm tired of paying for your leads that are junk. So I'm out. And they finally left me alone, but they, they called me a couple times after and I had to get kind of stern with them again. So I saw a joke and I don't know if it's real or not. I think Mary's going to try it. But what they said was, is like, what they said is, uh, if you tell them that you're part of the class action lawsuit, they'll never call you again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a class action lawsuit. Oh, no. yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a class action lawsuit uh, versus them. Yeah, but I just like to try to run some numbers with some of these new guys sometimes. And um and I, I, they stopped calling me just because I gave them some basic numbers. And I was like, well, what is the average price point of the inspection that you're selling? And then they can't give it to me. But from what I could see on Facebook, you have to literally be the bottom dollar. The people that are finding home advisor, home inspectors are going for the bottom dollar home inspectors. And the bottom dollar here in the, the Houston Texas area, I would say is probably like 325, like the guys that just are doing like the bare minimum, where it's just like one or there's like six photos in the whole report or something yeah. or in and out. And they want to charge anywhere between $17 and $21 a lead. And I was yeah. like, wait, so you're actually taking a huge percentage chunk. And they're like, well, how much are you profiting off of that? And I was like, well, you got gas, you have phones, you're scheduling. And I started going down the list with them. And then I was like, and then what if my tool breaks? You know, I, I would say, <laughs> right. And I just kept going on and on and on. And a bit, eventually they'll leave you alone. But the, one of the reasons why I didn't set up is one of my employees actually signed up with them because they get the new guys like heavy and they will spend a lot of money uh, through this thinking that they're getting leads and they're actually generating business. But he almost spent $5,000 uh, through them thinking that it was like a, a startup, a great startup expense. Yeah. He, wow. He didn't get any residual referrals off of these people and he never even broke even. So like he eventually was like, nah, I can't do this anymore. And now he works for us. You know, wow. <laughs> but, but honestly, like he enjoys uh, working with us a lot because we take care of all the marketing and the business expenses and everything. Yeah. And 
but it's just actually a really sad story because I just, I was literally, I had my credit card in my hand with them once and I was starting to give them my credit card number. And I was like, you know what? I need to look more into this. And then he's like, no, no, just finish it now. And I'm like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to get on this flight and I'm going to look into it more and get back to you. And then they called me back and I was like, no, nah, not, not even interested. But if anyone else doesn't believe either of us about home advisor, what I recommend doing is just going on a Facebook page and asking the question. Cause it's kind of a joke now. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I thought my experience was isolated because I'm in a unique market in Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, but I guess not so much. I actually had a buddy that's starting up his own company. He was like, yeah, home advisors all over me about, he was like, if you, you know anything about it, I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. He's like, okay, good to know. Yeah. I could completely agree with you. You're in a unique market. You're on an Island. Yeah. You know, there are so many home inspectors out there. Right. Like, so it's not, you're, it's not like you're completely saturated like Houston, Texas, where there's probably like four or five, maybe even a thousand home inspectors out here. Yeah. There's not that many here. Yeah. So I could, a uh, shortage. I, I definitely can understand like how you're like, well, that could possibly work for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. It doesn't even work in a, in a, uh, a not saturated market of home inspectors. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> they really don't work. <laughs> <laughs> they suck. Yeah. So uh, this is the, I'd, I'd say it may be close to like a year follow-up because I actually probably talked to you around the same time I talked to Steve Reckner of like some of the questions because you heard me talking to Reckner and then you're like, hey, I got some questions too. So <laughs> yeah. we could call this the one year follow-up with Carl too. Wow. And um, Crazy it's so, been that long. Yeah, so like one year has gone by and whenever you – called us one year ago, you were just about to start hiring, right? Is that what was going on? Yeah, I had, I had another guy that I just kind of winged it with, but he, and and I knew this when he came on, but he was only going to last like maybe a year. Mm -hmm. So I saw that I made a lot of mistakes with him. He was bailing and I was getting ready to hire a guy to replace him. And that's when I talked to you, I think last. Nice. So yeah. for anyone out there, we actually have not prepared this conversation. So I literally don't know what I'm about that and his answers <laughs> that I'm about to ask him. So whatever it is, it's actually going to be kind of cool. Or if not, we'll make action steps to uh, make it increase. So, yeah. um, so where are you at now? Do you have someone working for you now? Yeah. So I, I have my one guy. I trained him almost like you told me to. And learned that, okay, need to do exactly what Chris says. <laughs> and if anybody's wondering if the, if the home inspection whisper and the value that Chris offers through that service is worth it, I can tell you from experience, hands down, absolutely. absolutely. If you're building a business, you can go through what he did and make all the mistakes yourself and spend a lot of money and a lot of time and have a lot of heartache. Or you can get with him. And he can walk you through it step by step. And that's kind of what he's done uh, with me. It's been incredible. And I, I can't thank you enough for that. It's, it's just, uh, yeah, I'm very thankful for it. But the guy, um, the guy I have right now is, is incredible. Uh, the action steps that you gave me were amazing. The only thing that I didn't do with him is I did, I, I, you know, you kind of mentioned um, that after about two months, everyone's going to feel like, oh, they're good to go. And that is what happened. And I felt like, okay, he's good to go. And um, I cut him loose before he had the report writing totally solid. It didn't, it didn't affect anything super negatively. It was just a lot of extra time, a lot of extra work and a lot of extra heartache to kind of tune that up. But I would say, you know, his, his inspections were spot on it, you know, the customer service and, and the customer and the reports, you know, it wasn't really affected. I just had to do a lot of work to kind of clean things up on the back end. So that's going really good. I'm actually training my, my second guy right now. And I have my third guy in line waiting. He's already 50% done with his um, certification course. He's going on. I've already done an interview with him and he's on a ride along next week. We've got, we've got it all set up. So it, in the next six months, I'll have two more guys and got plenty of business to, um, to sustain all four of us. Nice. So I kind of lost track. My ADD kicked in or yeah. a, a little bit. Yeah, so, <laughs> so the second guy, he's not 
fully finished trained, right? Is that what you said? Right. He, the second guy just started um, uh, two weeks ago. Nice. And you're using the employee uh, contracts, the one month contracts with him? I made him sign the contract. I got that from the last, um, what was it, like a webinar that you did, two day webinar? Yep. Yeah. That was awesome. And getting all that information, uh, it, that was extremely valuable. I actually got up at 4 a.m. I think I got up at 3 30 yes. on that call at 4 a.m. And yep. I was like, well, we'll see how it goes. And man, I was like, you know, I was on the edge of my seat until about noon. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, we uh, what we tried to do with that workshop is Mary and I talked about it. A lot of the things that we most of the time when we go to home inspection classes, it's like eight hours and it's just one topic and they just kind of grind it out and it boring and you're like trying to fall asleep. <laughs> and then so our idea was to do one to two hour classes. I think they were one hour, weren't they? Yeah, they yeah. were. Yeah, they were like one an hour, hour, hour and a half. half. Yeah. Yeah, eight eight of them back to back, or seven of them back to back. So because you had an hour lunch, and we we just topics, it was all the highlights, the the top things that we did, and it was like a crash course. And then we sent y'all all the powerpoints afterwards to kind of like pull it up. But to to be to be honest, Mary was like on me about writing my uh, my employee. Uh, what's it called? Training class. I literally yeah. wrote it like four or five weeks or four weeks before it was going <laughs> because it was like a whole year. And I was like, Oh, I need to knock this out. That's the best way to do it. You got to get the pressure behind you to move, you know? Yeah. Uh, procrastination. <laughs> I just start. wrote down my questions for you about five minutes ago. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's on this funny. podcast. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But uh, yeah, so what he's referencing is uh, we held like a workshop together and the workshop, the first day is like how to set up your business. And the second day was like a lot of the steps that we use to generate money through our business, generate inspections and how we operate and how you train your employees and uh, uh, stuff along the lines of that. So that's, that's what he's referencing. Yeah, so, it was pretty much a, a handbook for creating a successful home inspection business today. And, you know, what, 16 hours, it was just like, if you, if you went through that, took notes and got the, got the information afterwards is like, you have everything you need to make an extremely successful home inspection business. I mean, I don't know where you can get that type of value. Um, I was telling you, you guys didn't charge enough for it. You know, oh yeah. It's it worth was, a lot. Yeah. We, we just started, so we might increase it just a little bit next time. We just wanted to see if people enjoyed the content, you know, yeah. just like anything, you know, you start your home inspection business, you start, low and then you realize that you're worth more than you are yeah. and you know you grow up from there <laughs> yeah but i liked how you made everything kind of available afterwards you were talking about the employee contracts you know they sign a um a contract after a month after two months after three months yeah and there has to be expectations set and accountability and that's one of the harder harder things to to create is that structure yeah. and you've kind of done all that and then you made the contracts available which was incredible and I was just about to start training with my second guy. So I was able to go onto the, the website, download those, you know, modify them based on my business and my preference. And then I had the guy sign it and it, it was just awesome. So now I got kind of a playlist set out and um, it's, it's going really well. You know, whenever I first started my home inspection business, my father, I think, was telling me to do that kind of stuff. And I was like, nah, nah, it's fine. I got it. It's not a big deal you know, we'll, we'll work it out. And honestly, training takes twice as long. So what we have is a three month training period where they're like literally 100% by the time three months hits, it was a six month training period. So you got to think mm -hmm. that that ends up being like two, four, you know, six, $12,000 of just, just pay, you know, that in three months of them not doing any jobs. So it, you're not only hurting them where they're not making more money, you're hurting the business too as well. So oh, yeah, yeah uh, the, the value of that, just that simple little contract, be like, hey, these are the tasks I need you to complete. It gives them motivation because they want to be a home inspector, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it solves everything. So uh, backtracking a little bit. So you, you just did the interview with that other uh, employee that the one that you're just looking at, he's halfway done with his classes. So I'm sure the contract says something along the lines of, wait, he's probably not even at the contract phase. 
No, he's not at the contract phase. The, the third guy is not at the contract phase. The second guy who has started training, he is in the contract phase, yeah. Yeah, so the third, the third person, he's just doing the ride along to see if he likes you. Is that what's about? Yeah, so I got, I got, you know, pretty, pretty much followed your model. I got on a call with him. Yep. We talked a little, you know, a little bit. He got referred by an agent. I was on, a, I was on a job site, and I was just like, hey, if you know anybody that's looking to be home inspector, you know, let me know. And the guy was like, actually, I do. You know, I know a guy that was wanting to start up his business. Got a little intimidated by it, but he he was starting the course, and I've been kind of on him about getting after it. But then he got another job and got kind of carried away. And um, I'll talk to him, and then I followed up with that agent like a week later and was like, Hey, did you get a chance to talk to your guy? And then uh, a couple hours later, he sent me his information and then that, and then, and then his guy was hitting me up. He, you know, he emailed me, called us, but he was hungry for it. And uh, he actually said that when he was wanting to start up his, you know, his thing, he, he said, you know, I was looking at different home inspection companies and he was like, you know, I, I thought yours was, you know, what I would, what I would want for myself. But he just said, you know, in hindsight, I, I really didn't want to start my own thing. and It was too much for me. So um, it sounded good on the phone. Got with him in person. We sat down for an hour, did an interview. I, I had your questions and asked him all the questions, chatted with him, made sure he was serious about it. And he's like, man, I'm on board. Let's do it. And I said, whoa, 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 let's, let's do a ride along so you can be sure because <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, like you said, go through all the steps. Don't skip anything yeah. and make sure it's going to work. So, yeah, we got it scheduled for Wednesday. Excited about it. Yeah, that, that ride along, you, you'll you be able to determine, honestly, if y'all both like each other. It's exactly. actually him liking you just as much as you liking him to understand, like, the process that you go through, how you handle clients, how you inspect. You know, it's just so y'all get to know each other. And then after that, if y'all do seem to get along pretty well, I actually messed up uh, one of the times because what happens was is someone, you need to do ride-alongs out here to get your license. And so what I was doing was I was letting him get his ride-along and then it just, we just happened to be hiring. So what happened was is I ended up liking him as a ride-along, right? But I was like, no, we still need to do the face-to-face -face interview. Did the face-to-face -face interview and it was kind of a bomb. And I just wish... I didn't like him before we did the interview. So it's just like, I kind of did it out of order. And, oh. and so I had that emotional attachment to the person because I knew him and kind of liked him from the ride along to yeah. sitting down with Mary. And if anyone actually knows Mary, she's like the iron fist. She like, you rub her wrong, you're dead to her. <laughs> <laughs> You're not making it in. And That's so, crazy that you enjoyed him on the inspection, but yeah, it's good that you didn't skip that step. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so he was just like a completely different person in the interview or what? I, I just don't know um, exactly like how it worked out. It was just um, the interview, just you didn't get that feeling that it, that they would fit. You know, I, I don't know. It was just like something along the lines. And what I had to ask myself was, is if someone interviewed like that before I actually knew them, would they have made it to the ride along phase? Sure. That's, that's where I made the decision. I was like, no, it's, it wasn't a complete no though yet because he wasn't, didn't have his full license. I like to always give other people second shots. So what we would do is, um, we told him to go finish his license and then he can come back and we'll do another interview. So uh, it could have been a bad day for him. You know what I mean? Uh, so we'll, we'll go from there, you know? <laughs> so it's not like a 100% no. If it was up to Mary, it would be, he would never, <laughs> but I always like to, I'm the more forgiving. So it's actually nice that we have that balance in mm -hmm. our, our business, but that, yeah, you're, you're hitting it right on the point. I mean, you, you'll notice like things actually just move faster and you find the right people. And like you said, this guy, he went out, he failed at doing a home inspection business. And he's like, you know what? That's just not really for me. And, and that's actually the home inspectors that you need or want. And the ones that you really don't want are the ones that are like, Hey, I want to work for you and then maybe start my own business. And, yeah. And, See ya. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> But the they don't know what they're saying most of the time because they're always like, so you want me to train you and then you be my direct competition on the exact way I do home inspections. Right. It's like, are you crazy? Yeah. But also 
we, we are growing a business here. Like even if you are my direct converse, uh, competition, Houston is so big here. I mean, it's not like Hawaii, but like Houston's so big here that you could be my next door neighbor and we both be busy. It's, it's like, well, if I train you up and you work for me for two years, I'm going to build a client base to support you. And then you like go off and take off. Then I'm, then I'm screwed. You know, like I have to figure out how to meet that demand, which puts me back in the field and I have to go, which is happening right now. You know, we just had someone leave. Uh Yeah. So that's why I was doing that stucco inspection. (laughs) Uh, But the, yeah, it, it, it messes the system up, you know, so you have too much demand and you have to meet those clients needs and clients and customers, you know, it's, it's tough. <laughs> it's yeah. Tough. So I got a question for you. Yeah, let's hit it. Um, how do you do, cause you know, now that I'm kind of getting this multi inspector firm, which I'm really excited about, we, we also just hired an office girl to kind of help out. Um, to my, my wife was freaking booking inspect, you know, we, we can't do the ACC because our, our hours are different here, oh, right? They're not a 24 hour service. So yeah. they wouldn't start answering the calls until, you know, too late or, or I forget how it works out, but it doesn't, the call center, eh, I don't know, not going to work for right now. Mm-hmm. So my wife is answering the phones and scheduling inspections for seven days a week, you know, 10 yeah. hours a day. And it was just too much. So we've got an office girl, we're hiring these new home inspectors, but how do you keep like your team commodity how do you create that when everyone's out doing their own thing like you have team meetings do you do you bring in the office staff with the inspectors or do it separate or so that that's actually a really great question we're not meeting up right now uh because of covid uh it's kind of everything shut down and we do have some older guys in our team so we do meet once a month uh and it's a full staff meeting so all the office, everybody's there, and we do it through via Zoom right now. But even before COVID, we always did a full staff meeting uh, via via you know in person. And I actually like in person; it gets the chance where we all get to hang out. We buy everyone food, and we bring in and we just talk. So that is one way of com- camaraderie and keeping everyone uh, together. So during this team meeting. We talk about several things. Uh, One of the first things is is we'll pick a topic. For example, uh, Mary's last class, she teaches uh, agents how to, you know, about windows or mold or roofs or something. And she has like a one hour CE course. She'll do a crash course of the one hour course. So it'll be Mm -hmm. like 30 minutes and we'll just talk about windows. So you just pick a topic. Uh, sometimes I'll do WDIs because I have to do education over WDIs or, you know, or plumbing. You know, we'll talk about a specific plumbing and kind of just keep our, our brain sharp that way. And then another thing is, as I always bring up, is I talk about every single complaint that came in. And whenever I talk about these complaints, I am not beating up on anybody. I literally, we're learning about the complaints as a team. So whatever this complaint is, we don't have it repeat itself down the line. Mm. I won't call out their name or anything, but sometimes what I like to do is that they don't get the telephone effect. Uh, I just tried this last team meeting and it worked out really well is we, I did let the person, we did talk about the person that it happened to, but we let that person tell their story about why it may have happened or how we may have prevented it from happening. So we're trying to solve it as a team so it doesn't happen again. And the third thing I would say that really keeps our camaraderie together where we're all together is we do a massive group chat. So uh, uh, through our iPhones, we all have iPhones and uh, we do a group chat. So if we see something funny, and this actually takes a lot of pressure off you as the owner too as well, because remember we all know a little bit about a lot, but some person, someone on your team might know more about a certain topic. Like we have prior electricians, we have prior builders on our team. We have, you know, an old mold inspector on our team. So with, with that being said, they can ask a certain question that I might not 100% know the answer to, but that person does. And then they all ask it. And then we like to share all the funny stuff that we have. Nice which gives us social media content for our social media person to 
be able to post those videos and pictures because that's the funny stuff that we see in the field. So Love yeah, it. that's, that's all three. So I'd say those three things, yeah. Team meeting and then the things that you discuss in the team meeting and that group chat there. That so when you're doing meeting. it in person, where's the ideal location for this meeting? We actually have an office space that has a conference room, um, but uh, you can ha do like we used to do once a year or twice a year we did like fun stuff so once a year i like to try to do top golf which didn't happen this year or something fun like that and then we do a christmas party it, but you can do like restaurants especially since your team isn't like crazy large right now you know there's what, like six of you guys now mm -hmm. it, oh yeah there'll be when when all the training is said and done there'll be six of us yeah yeah so yeah, there's six of you and then uh, y'all can just get there as a team and then uh, y'all, y'all could easily do dinner. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like y'all can just walk, go around a circle and y'all could talk that way too as well. Right. So, and, but then as you grow, eventually you'll be able to find someone with an office space and you'd be surprised. There's a, like a lot of real estate agents that you probably work with that have like a house where you can actually rent a room out of their house uh, that they it's like an office house you can rent a room and you might be able to get a conference table that way or a little conference area that you can nice. schedule yeah we got a lot of high-end hotels here and that could be a good spot for them yeah if it's not crazy expensive maybe you could spend like 200 bucks for two hours or something like that yeah you know, bring in some food yeah. and pretty much you'll lose one whole inspection for it but honestly like as Worth soon as yeah, as soon as I started doing those team meetings, our complaint volume went to almost zero. You know, you get big complaint volumes, I would say, like big complaints. Of course, you're going to get little complaints here and there, you know, like, um, you know, the GFCI is not working anymore or, but we even talk about those, you know, like how we can handle them better or, or your inspector said something that I didn't like the way you said it. And then those are the kind of complaints you get. It's not like missing termite damage or something, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Cool. Uh, have you heard of Marco Polo? No. What is that? It's an app. It's a, it's a video messaging app. So like with text message, right? Okay. Text message, you can send somebody a message and they can, look at it whenever they want, respond whenever they want. So this is like text message, but for video, right? You hit a button, you make a recording, you hit the button again to stop it, it automatically sends to that person. Mm. And it's within the app, so they just get a notification like, hey, someone's telling you Marco Polo, but it's really useful um, w with my guys because if they have a question on the job, like, hmm, how should I write this up? Should I write this up? Um, what do you think about this? They can send me a Marco Polo. And like, if I'm talking to a client at that moment, I can't answer it. So it's, it's, it's better than a phone call. It's better than FaceTime because I might not be, I, mean, I might need five minutes to look at it, yeah. but then I get the message. I look at it. I video message them back. And also if I'm looking at a unique situation, like, uh, the other day I was looking at something with a pool and spa that was kind of unique. And I was like, man, I need to share this with my guys. I hit the button. I have like a group forum on there. I'm like, Hey guys, if you ever see this yesterday, I was looking at a backflow preventer doing a sewer scope. And I was like, Hey, and I took a video of the sewer scope screen. I was like, if you ever see this, do not go through it. Here's why. And I explained it. And, that, and it was just a reminder and then clicked it off and they can watch it whenever they want. It's really, really awesome for um, just, you know, providing information, answering questions while your guys are out there, just giving them support. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, same concept of, the group chat that we right. do. Yeah. If yeah. you all have iPhones, I think that would, the iPhones connect really well together and it works that way. But if someone on your team doesn't have an iPhone, then you definitely need to do Marco Polo. <laughs> that, yeah. that sounds perfect actually yeah. uh, with it. So did you have another question lined up? If you didn't, I have something. Ooh, I do have more questions, but we can yeah. hit yours next. No, no. Yeah. Shoot the questions first. I'm uh, curious how you um, handle cancellations. So like cancellations before we get there or when we're there? We don't have a policy right now at all. And as we're getting busier and busier, we're finding that, you know, people blow you off last minute. It's like, huh, you just cost us money. 
And it's like, we don't have a policy. We're thinking about implementing like a 48 hour policy or 36 hour policy. We don't know, but. So there are some of my inspector friends that do uh, cancellation policies. Uh, I do not. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I just, it is what it is. It's just part of the industry and I don't even view it as lost money. I just view it as, and stuff happens. I get the afternoon off. Like that's exactly. Kind of, yeah. So, um, I do. I have. I don't think they get much kickback. I. I just know. I don't know. You know. I've never really tried it too much. I've really not thought much into it. I think my father tried to do it for a bit, and then they got some complaints on it, so they may have dropped it. But overall, I just kind of left it alone. Yeah, that's kind of the way I'm feeling about it. The new girl was mentioning it. Maybe we should have this policy. And I've always was under the impression it's like, I'm not going to make someone pay for a home. But you, there's usually something is awry. Yes. And it's not a good situation for them to begin with and to hold them over the coals for it. I don't think that they're purposely trying to screw us over anyways. And if you hold them over the coals for it, when they do get in contract on their next house, they're probably not, you're probably not going to be their call if you charge them the 500 bucks for an inspection that you would, that they didn't even need, you know? Yeah. And that's a solid point too. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up was because you were saying something along the lines of it's probably not their fault anyways. And you're right. Like the real estate market moves so fast all the time and they're just going off the advice of someone else. They're saying that you need to schedule this. Well, what, ha- what happens if they don't even have the contract for it yet? You know, what ha- or they say they did. You know, their, their agent could actually say, so you had the contractor, you're not going to get a time slot. You know, there, there probably is some other situation that is going on. It's not that they just found another home inspector. Sure. Uh, what we do, what kind of reduces the volume, I know that we do send out text messages and we do send out emails um we don't do a a phone call before but they get a text message like hey your inspector's on his way you know hey um your inspection is tomorrow you get an email you know uh the the day the time you actually scheduled it and then you get one the day before the inspection and then i think they even get an email letting them know that the inspector's on the way so like we literally blast them so they know that we're coming Uh, so it really try to prevents the inspector from going yeah. So if the inspector gets there and they cancel it, we still don't do too much. But if he is doing the job and he's like halfway done with the job sure. or in the job, we do half price. So if he's there and he's working on it, say he's found too many things that they don't want to buy the property. We just say, hey, if you want to stop right now from everything I found, uh, it's just half. And then we move on. And right on. Then, yeah, I, I've just noticed, I just don't, I just don't get a good feeling about charging that. Some people would say, no, you must, you need to do it or you're going to lose money. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. It hasn't happened to me yet. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't been an issue really for uh, like, sometimes we'll have last minute cancellations, but with how busy it's like, you, you just fill the slot or like you said, great. I get the afternoon off, man. It's been a busy week. I'm, I'm cool with that. You know? Yeah. yeah t- a lot of people forget to take the time to themselves. And I really do believe in work-life balance. You know, if I have mm-hmm. the afternoon off, take the afternoon off, you know, like go, go to lunch sure. <laughs> by yourself. Enjoy some good Mexican food. Drink you, a beer, don't man. Have that. you don't have that there. Do you? <laughs> uh, we, we do have one good place, but I, I doubt it's anything like, like Texas. Like the Texas. <laughs> it would be hard for me to live anywhere else just because the lack of Mexican food. Yeah. I hear you, man. <laughs> I'm going to get some Mexican food for lunch. Actually. Now that you're talking about it, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> somewhat mexican food it's kind I had of some tacos last night too <laughs> <laughs> that's funny all right what's the next one um all right so how much you know like right now we're just i started this business in early 2018 right so it's been about two and a half years and even for the first six months i wasn't really cruising that much i mean it's a new business yeah. but the growth is incredible like I've never experienced it. Most people I talk to that start small businesses and it freaks you out. You know, every step you take when you're building a business, I don't know about you, but it scares the hell out of me. And yeah. it's like, whoa, bringing on another guy. Whoa, bringing on another guy. But the, the market is demanding it. And I, and I want to be there to support the community and help these people out. So my question is, is how, how much 
do you grow and how fast? Is there a limit? Like, do you just pump the brakes? Or you just go full steam ahead and like just leave the wake behind you and just see what the hell happens? So uh, that that's actually a really great question. And uh, it's something that I've learned over a period of time uh, while I've been doing this. When I first started, I tried to grow as fast as I could. And then I didn't have the right people. You know, um, the quality of my product went down. I got like really bad complaints uh, from growing too fast. And then I'd say about three years ago, I would say or so, we really stuck to that system, the system that you're following right now. Right. Yeah. Train one person at a time, bring them on, train them really well, uh, make sure that they're good to go before you bring on the next one and just slow and steady. And, you know, isn't there like some sort of saying slow and steady is actually fast. So yeah, slow and steady wins the race, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like if you're one thing that I was, was taught was, is never stop recruiting because you never, yeah, you never stop recruiting, but you don't always have to hire. Right. Mm. So like you, you hire the right person but it's, it's easy to create the work for the right person. That's what I'm trying to say. Sure. Okay. But it's hard to find the right person if you don't, if you, even if you have the work. Mm -hmm. Does that come out right? I think yeah, kind of. I mean, I see what you're saying. It's like it, you, you, you want to keep, you know, keep, some, keep your options open, right? Yeah. yeah if, sure. if you're trying to, if you have all the work and not the person, you may try to force it a little more. Yeah. So if you have I, the perfect person, you might be able to, you know, make it happen. So I know you're in a new business and it's a two and a half, you're saying it's like two and a half, three years old and you already have, you know, a, an office person running for you. You're in the field, you have someone else, you have someone else in the field and you have someone training, right? Mm -hmm. That seems like it's a lot, but actually, no, you have a really great team around you. You know, uh, I think husband wife teams grow a lot faster than other inspection companies because y'all divide up the tasks really well. You know, mm -hmm. that office job is a full-time job and it's just as important as your job in the field as a home inspector. A lot of people don't understand that. It is truly 50-50. If she doesn't do something right, it messes it up. You don't do something right, it messes it up. So, but also because your times are divided up that you're able to open yourself up for that rapid growth. You're able to focus on just training and the processes of training. And then she's able to make sure all his paperwork is done correctly and the payroll is going out correctly. So I don't actually think you're growing too fast. I think because you're following the same steps that we've failed to the point to where we created and you're just yeah. learning off of our prior mistakes, I actually think you're going perfectly fine. Because I remember before you told me about somebody and I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work out. And then you tried it anyways, and it didn't work out. <laughs> and then you turned around and you're like, well, I'm going to just start doing what he said. And you did. And it's just like, yeah, you have someone that really wants to work for you. He wants to be part of your team. And then the next person's coming along. And the same thing, this, this, the final one that not the final one, I don't want to say the final one, but this third person coming on, he wants to work for you. You know, he wants your type of team. So, um, I was talking to Mary the other day talking about teams. This is actually kind of an offshoot. I don't think I would, I don't even know how anyone does this as a solo man op operation 100% at all. Like yeah. I, if I was off on my own and I didn't have Mary, I definitely want to be part of the team. Like sure. one, not, yeah, 100% because there's just too much stuff going on. Oh, that's <laughs> you know? crazy. I yeah. If I didn't have my wife to help me build the business in the beginning, I mean, I tell her all the time, there's no way, there's no way I could have done it without her. So I know that was a roundabout answer, but I don't think you're growing too fast. I think okay. if you follow those steps properly, you know, you manage it correctly. I, I think you're right on, you know, right on the money. You know, cool. don't, the biggest thing is, is just don't hire someone just because you want them, you know, make, okay. hire. The don't right force person. it. Yeah, don't force it. Just yeah, and I and I had other interviews, and I'm real big on that. It's like I gotta go, and if I'm not feeling it, I'm out. And I had other interviews where it's just like, yeah. I mean, I, right when I sat down and just got the vibe, it was like, nope. Yeah, yeah. Just, Went through the paces, but then I was, you know, I just bailed on it. So. Yeah, 
And that was my biggest failure of all time. I just literally hired anyone that seemed ready to learn right then and there, or they, or they just needed a job. Right. And Mm -hmm. that's not home inspections, like home inspections. You need a very particular type of person to do it because we are a rare job. We are not being supervised and we have to be expected to do it. And it is statistically proven people perform better while they're being watched. Like it's, and so um, that being said, that kind of goes on my next line. I did uh, just promote a lead inspector in my team. And mm-hmm. uh, every week he picks a, a few, one or two random reports from our guys and our team. And they, uh, they get a, like a r- report review and it's cleaned up our reports. So that's kind of nice. So people do perform better when they're being watched. And that's kind of what I did. Implemented nice. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Well, I'll write that one down. <laughs> Yeah, just like a few random reports. I don't, I don't like to hover, you know, No, you trust them to say, just literally pick, pick one or two. I do know some uh, company owners, they will review every report before they even get sent out and then make them change stuff before it gets sent out. You know, every inspector is going to find something different. Yeah, every, every single one. So you just got to remember that you know, they're never going to be you. They're going to actually see something that you're not going to see. So yeah, I do that in the beginning with them. And that's what I had to do with the other guy, but for way too long because I didn't go enough over the reporting. But the, the, the idea was when he got home from his inspection, he'd do it to the best of his ability, send it over to me. I'd check everything. I would critique it and then send it out. But it was just, it was awful. You know, for six, we were doing that for a few months. And it's like, I had to get my reports out and then wait for him to get his reports out and then look over everything. It was just exhausting. It just didn't really work. But I check up on his stuff every once in a while. And a lot of times it's just a thumbs up and that helps him to know like, okay, he's looking over him. But the guy's so meticulous and detailed, like that's just the way he's wired. He actually got better at report writing when I stopped looking at him because he wanted it to be perfect for the client. And, and having that buffer of me actually made him back off of things a little bit. Yeah. So it was, it was actually a good thing when I was like, okay, I'm done looking over your stuff and it got better. So, oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> Probably not a lot of people like that, but. So, that's what I was saying too. It, it falls back to what I was saying before, home inspections. You need that particular type of person. Yeah, yeah. you do. Yeah. yeah, They're out there. You just got to, like you said, you, you can't rush it. Yeah. I know Clayton Bailey with the green scene home inspections. He has um, like, they make him take a personality test or something like that. I don't do that, but wow. some, some people do. Yeah, get down to the science of it, huh? Yeah. Me, I just go, I go with the feeling. <laughs> that's it. I go with my gut, and uh, yeah. that seems to work out pretty good. And you'll know. Like, you've you probably figured it out so far. Like, you you know, you just sit down, and you're just like, I don't know. And if you get that, I don't know, you're done, you know. Done. But, but if you get, like, he's it, you know, I, I want to, you just know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My <laughs> wife was asking me about the one person I in, interviewed she was like, are you sure? I mean, on paper, everything, it's incredible. Like everything's there. And I'm like, don't question me <laughs> because then you're making me second guess myself. Like if it's there, it's there. You know, I, I trust my own gut instinct. So I was like, I know on paper it looks really good, but when I sat in front of them, it didn't, it wasn't, the vibe wasn't there. So I'm out. Yeah. Nice. All right. So what's the next one? Um, I think, you know, I, I guess I could ask, you know, like we've been turning down a massive amount of business. we got a huge real estate boom, which is part of the reason I'm hiring two guys so quickly. But um, what do you, do you still just do the same marketing, even though you're turning down business? You just yeah. keep going after it? Never stop marketing. Never you stop have marketing. The business. You have the business because you are not stop marketing. So it's just part of the system. You stop doing one thing, then the rest of the system will fail. And okay you get that from Buffini and what, what he calls it, that is like, it's called peak producers because they're always operating at their peak. Right. So you're always operating like you're, you, it's just a system. You're just doing it. And so what happens is, is if you stop marketing, you'll get more of this, you know, up and down, up and down. You're like, Oh, I have a bunch of business. Oh, I don't have any business. Now I need to start marketing. And then it shoots up again. Right. Then, There's a delay. Yeah. yeah then, so you get that up and down. But if you just always continually market, you'll always continually have the business, no matter if it's slow or busy. And um, of course, you're going to get a little bit of a slowdown, but it will not be as bad over November and December time 
as in January. We started doing the peak producer about three years ago and it didn't slow down crazy amounts over the winter time. And I'm like, Oh man, this actually might work. <laughs> you know, like, so yeah. So never stop marketing ever. Like, yeah. yeah. We just did a, we just, we're, we're about to send out some gift baskets to our top 10 agents uh, that keep us really busy. $250 gift card for one of the nicest restaurants on the island, homemade candles from local businesses and some other gift, like another gift basket. And they, my wife sent in this all to them in the mail. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's really generous. Like, um, yeah, I don't go that far. <laughs> but I do know um, Michael Conrad does. He does it in tiers. So he, has, he likes to tier his agents. So he has top 10 tier agents, then he has top 50 tier agents, and he has top 100 tier agents. So he actually will send out 100 things. But it's, wow. but it's like maybe the top 10 will get those really aggressive amazing gift baskets and then the top 50 or top yeah 50 will get something else and maybe the top 100 get thank you cards you know yeah like that. you know a really good idea my wife actually came up with this and we're going to implement it um she wants me to create a because I, I designed our website and everything but she wants me to create an agent thank you page right it'll have they'll they'll basically get sent a link to this page they'll come to the page There'll be a video of her and I basically welcoming them, telling them, you know, thank you. you. You were one of our top agents and we really want to thank you for that. And below you'll find a list of items. Please pick whatever you would most desire from these items and provide you, you know, there'll be like a little form at the bottom, provide the address that you'd like us to send it to. And then they'll click on it and kind of fill out the form. And then that's the way they get their gift. And then we can create different pages for different people and just share the link. I almost think that's too much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like playing it through my head, you know, like these people are obviously really busy, right? You know, um, so with these people being really busy, the last thing they want to do is like have to go through more steps. I more, think, yeah, more yeah, forms. I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of value in just getting a gift. You yeah. Know, you're just, just, I didn't have to go in and like, <coughs> almost like they're, they're shopping, right? Yeah. So I think, I think just send them a gift, anything, you know, uh, I think it has more value than them going online and picking it. Yeah. Gotcha. And, well, I'm just thinking about like anything, you know, you give your wife a gift out of nowhere. She's probably happier than you'd be like, Hey, pick, pick what you want. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. They don't want to pick. They just want to get whatever they got. Yeah. yeah. You, could, you don't want her to yeah. pick the flowers. Just give her some flowers, <laughs> you know? Point. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So um, with that being said, I've actually started a new book and it kind of rechanged the way I think about business a little bit. I have not made it crazy far in there. I talked about uh, to Steve Rechner a little bit about it and it's kind of like a challenge that I'm the regular podcast uh, people that are coming on and I, it's called Profit First. Have you heard of it? No. Okay. So Profit First uh, whenever you first met me, I was probably like, you thought I was going to conquer the world of home inspections. I wanted to own every home inspection company. And now uh, he talks about, about having a small but really profitable business is actually better than owning a big business. And so I, it really spoke to me because he was, it was like, why do you need all the Lambos and anything? I don't even like that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, this is starting to speak to me a little bit. And then he, he just kept talking about, you know, small is better. And that's kind of where I'm at right now, but Mary's further in the book, but how you manage this is, is you actually manage your bank accounts, your, your money coming in different than you do traditional accounting. So uh, traditional accounting, it's just the way I've operated for years is, Hey, I am spending less than I'm making. So I'm good. Sure. You know, yeah. that, that's how I feel like a lot of businesses out there, especially businesses just starting out are like, all right, I think we can do this because I'm spending less than I'm making. And then profit first to actually divides it up across five different bank accounts, which is, uh, you know, you have 
the money coming in, then you have your expenses, then you have, there's five other bank accounts. I haven't gotten it out, but you divide it up. You have a tax bank account, you have a revenue bank account, you have a, a uh, you have a, uh, Mary, I'm going to get Mary on this uh, to talk about it on the next episode. Oh, I'm excited about this, man. Yeah, but, and then you have a profit bank account. And you don't even think that the profit bank account is what it is. The profit bank account is actually uh, money that goes back to the employees, you know, so you can bonus them. It's, and the money's divided right. up to determine how, if your business is actually profitable or not. There's actually another wow. bank account in there that is your, your money. So you have your money and then there's a profit bank account that actually can be spent onto the business as a rainy day fund. Or if uh, at the end of the year you get there, it goes back to the employees or something like that, however you want to spend it. But I've always wanted to do that, been able to give my employees back, but I've always been scared, right? What if something goes down or there's a slow season and I ha I do have a rainy day fund in there, but I would like actually a designated rainy uh, profit to them account. So uh, it's a pretty quick read. It, uh, even audio book, it's only eight hours. If you want to do awesome. it. Um, I'm, I'm downloading it now. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the funny thing is, is the next question and the last question I have for you was about accounting. Oh, it was what? like, it was well, about accounting. And then we we're talking about how to, you know, how much to grow. And that's been my apprehension. It's like, how do I secure you know, the financial side of things and feel good about moving forward. Like, how do you map that whole thing out? It sounds like this book is the answer. No, that is 100% the answer. Like literally awesome. every time I go to hire someone, I just look at the bank account and be like, yeah, we could afford it. Maybe, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm at. And that's why yeah. I was asking you is like, do you just keep the two guys and keep turning down business or do you just, you know, how far do you take it? You know? So, so he talks about, and this is actually perfect what we were talking about before it's slow and steady, healthy growth. And, and what there is a bank account that is specifically designed for expenses. And one of your expenses is a hiree, you know, so you could see in your expense bank account, you're like, well, we have an extra $15,000 in the expense bank account. And you're like, it takes us this much to actually hire him. Yeah, let's go for it. You know, mm -hmm. we can do it. And it's in that bank account. And then you have profit in the profit bank account. And you divide each one up into a certain percentage. And the thing that always got me was taxes. You know, I don't, I'm really conservative the way I spend. So at the end of the year, I didn't really spend, I don't really spend anything until the very end of the year, until taxes go out. And our tax bill gets just crazier and crazier every year. Sure. But now there's going to be a bank account specifically just for taxes. So I know mm -hmm. that I can afford my taxes at the end of the year. Yeah. And I saw that and Mary told me that immediately. And I'm like, let's do it. You know, do so it. I, yeah, do it. I mean, yeah. like, because one of our biggest arguments I would say was always money, you know, like w with, I think that's like that in all. That's companies. really common with it. Yeah. 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 And, and, it wasn't like a huge conflict. We knew that we were profitable, but we didn't know how much. That's right? where I'm at. And we kind of knew, we knew that we did the math a few times and it always came out a certain number. And then we're like, well, there's so many variables. There is so many variables with this. And this book literally will clearly define the way you, uh, what your profit is or what you want your profit to be. You know, yeah. you can, figure out what you need to adjust to get there. And so yeah. um, that's awesome. That's funny. That um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, my wife has always done the, the accounting. I was just sitting down with her a couple nights ago and I, I was like, are we good? Like we're, we're set, like we're good to hire these guys and all that. And like, I was like, where are we at? And she's like, she's like, Carl, I don't know. You know, she, <laughs> she has always set aside for taxes and plans really well on that. But she's like, you've been growing so fast. I can't give you solid numbers. Like there's too many variables. It changes so fast, but I can tell you like, we're profitable. We're doing good. Like we have the money in the bank account to get all the tools for these two guys. Like I know that, but beyond that, it's like, I can't tell you, I can't give you any type of like solid stability because it's shooting through the roof. Like, yeah. like, but yeah, this will be awesome. I'm excited. Yeah. Don't let me forget whenever you start the book and you get further into the book to the point where you have to open up five bank accounts, make sure you message me. Okay. Harry was given a spreadsheet and it's actually a spreadsheet of how you really uh, divide the money up on and 
whatnot. So it's really good. I saw that spreadsheet. I'm like, did you make that? And she was like, no, she's part of like a coach. It's like a book club just for that book. And he gave her the spreadsheet. And I was like, I was like, this is awesome. Like, this is what the, like the last final, I mean, there's always something you're learning. Right. But I was like, this is the missing piece where we can like really, because I've always been wanting to grow a whole lot because I've always wanted to get to a certain level of income, but I don't even know where I'm going to get to that level of income, you know, but now it's, I think that we're going to be able to get there, which is cool. Which is awesome. I'm excited for you, man. I appreciate you sharing that with all of us. Yeah. Um, cool. So I think that we're getting close to the hour yep. and we answered all the questions. So that was an epic. Uh, yeah, that, was, that was a good one. Yeah. yeah but, <laughs> winging it yeah. you were like you're like i assume you have some questions for me before we got on this i was like uh no not really i guess we'll just wing it <laughs> and i jotted a bunch down real quick <laughs> yes yeah, that's my favorite thing to do is just wing it yeah. shoot from the hip man <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so um with that being said how do people find you how do people find me they find me on my website which is hawaiitopnotch.com um instagram which is home inspector underscore hawaii stole that one from you Nice. And um, yeah, you can email me at hawaiitopnotch at gmail.com as well. Nice. So what we need to do is the challenge is, is to finish the book Profit First and my challenge is to finish it too as well. And I'm going to finish that thing tomorrow. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll beat me. Yeah. <laughs> you, but, yeah, I'm an audio book guy. So you'll yeah. just see me be bopping around the house with my headphones on and I'll be done with it. Nice. Yeah, it, it really did so far. I'm, I haven't even, I've finished chapter one and it's already changed the way I thought about how I wanted to, you know, live my life in a way. And it talked about, and it's, I think it's going to work, you know? So yeah, the challenge is to finish the book and the next podcast, you and I will talk about the book of how we're going to try Ooh, to implement it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And I, I will thank you for never split the difference. Cause I listened to that book about five times in a row and oh, really? um, I've been wheeling and dealing ever since. I actually just Using that technique from the book, I just um, stumbled upon a seller that needed to get rid of some stuff and get off the island. I, mm. I bought him, I, I, I haggled him down, um, bought a bike, a bike and a motorcycle for $8,300. And I just offloaded the car alone. I'm sorry, but I'm, I got a car and a motorcycle for $8,300. And I sold the car alone for, for 89 just a couple of days ago. Oh, nice. And so I got a free motorcycle and it's worth like six or seven grand. So I'm going uh, after this podcast, I'm going to go get the registration for it and I'll sell that too. So, yeah, I use uh, never split the difference to respond to complaints. Oh, so, man, it's, it yeah, is like awesome it, book. Yeah. So like I've used that same strategy with responding to complaints and the, the strategy that I use with there is that it's like they have a whole long list of everything that they say. And what I always do is I repeat exactly what they say. So they feel like they, they heard understand. I've heard yeah. them and they understand what they're going to say. And then I will say my part and then they're, they're way more open to it. They're instead of me just, you know, blasting them with being like, no, no, it's not like that. Instead I'd be like, okay, you have this issue that you found it this way. I can hear you. All right, this is the reason why it can't any you know, it just a better form of communication. That's all. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's awesome. Good. I got all that stuff from you, man. You're a wealth of knowledge. That's cool, man. All right, cool. So you got your challenge. I got mine too. And we're gonna finish this profit first book and then we're gonna figure out how to change our home inspection businesses. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thanks again for uh, joining us on the podcast and um uh, Catch us on in the next one.